let's do it together. Is that all right? All right. Can we pray? All right. God, this morning, we just want to hear your voice. We want to get out of the way. I want to get out of the way. And I just want to present to you, uh, to, to your people, everything that you've been speaking. And God, I pray that we'll receive it in such a way that we hear everything your heart is trying to, to present to your church this morning. And we just receive it this morning. And we um, accept every challenge that you're going to present to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, yeah, part of my story I just want to start off with sharing is um, probably like me, you've probably felt at some point of your life, maybe even right now, that you are challenged with just wanting to make the most of your life. And I found as I stepped into this year, um, coming back off maternity leave and that obviously being a massive part of everything I do um, and never want to negate that as well. But I stepped back into the workplace and I stepped back in, into the other part of what God was doing through me and I, I didn't feel satisfied. I didn't really feel like I was nailing it on the head and I didn't really know uh, what that looked like but I just knew that, that something wasn't quite there. It wasn't all fitting together and I was having this wrestle with God and really challenged by that of going, well, you know, what am I doing really that is making an impact with my life? And like I said, please don't hear what I'm not saying about family and investing in that, investing in my children's lives. That's 100% my mission and my goal. Um, but on top of that, how is God using me? And, you know, I guess throughout life, I've had moments where I've been on mountaintops with God and felt like I was achieving everything that God had purpose for me. And then other areas of my life where I'd go, I just don't know if I'm really cutting it with God. And so that's where I was kind of feeling and, you know, just saying to myself, I don't want to waste this life that God's given me. I don't want to waste um, what is put in my hands and I don't want to waste um, my days away and was just challenged by that. Has anyone else here felt that way in their life and questioned, you know, am I really making the impact that God has for me? And so this morning, my message title, for those of you taking notes, is Don't Live a Wasted Life. And I know that's kind of harsh because you might be think here sitting, sitting here thinking, I don't know if I am wasting my life. Like I was very challenged by that. But I want to encourage you because this morning I have some answers for you. And um, the Word of God has the answers for you of how to live a life that's not, not going to be wasted for God. And... We're already jumping into point one, but I really felt that we needed to start by this, is to not live a wasted life, we need to live like a fool. And um, the Word of God shares this so adequately, and so I'm going to read it from there. But essentially, everything that we think is wise in this world is actually foolishness to God. And everything that, when we can be a fool, He actually calls it wisdom. So, um, yeah, we're reading from, from first. Corinthians 3 and 4 this week in our reading plan and right now we're going to land on, where are we? Have we got it on the screen? 1 Corinthians 3, 18 to 19 and it says, do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. And um, you know, I was pondering on this and I was thinking, um, it's easy to kind of look at the world right now and go, oh, there's so much foolishness out there and they're all being a little bit ridiculous, you know. Um, and we can, we can look at that and think that we are wise because we're not living like them. But even in our wisdom, where we think we're not doing all those things so we're wise in what we're doing, God still calls us foolish. And, you know, for me, it's like the pursuit of so many things I even want... God has so much better for us. So, you know, having, having a spouse, God's intention for it 100%, but the pursuit of it, the pursuit of having a family, the pursuit of having money to buy a car, to provide for your family, to get that next job, to get the promotion, to live a, a life that is kind of nice, to get a beautiful home and to one day see your kids off, graduate them, um, whatever, go to uni um, and then to retire well and to go on your holiday, maybe travel Australia, 
jump in the caravan. All these things are not bad things, don't get me wrong. They're all things I want in my life. But it's also foolishness to God. He doesn't necessarily call, call it wise because our attention is not fixed on him and eternal matters. And he actually has so much more than just to live a nice life. He doesn't want us to just live this beautiful, pristine little life on top of our salvation. He actually, um, he actually has so much more for us. And so don't hear me wrong. You can have all of those things and still be walking with Jesus. Um, but I anticipate that God's going to call you to do something more than that. Yeah? So the main scripture this morning that I'm reading from is also in chapter 3. And so we're going to turn to verse 9. It's a bit of a long one, so follow along. For we are God's... Sorry. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I've laid a foundation as a wise builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day, judgment day, will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. A reward. If it is burnt up, the builder will suffer loss, yet will be saved, even though as one escaping through flames. And so I want to preface this by saying 100%, this, what I'm sharing today is not a matter of your salvation, because it says that, you know, we can be, we can be scraping through to eternity and everything else in our life can be burnt up, but you still have eternal life. So... Honestly, that's the biggest thing, that's the best thing that we can have is to know that as we bow before his throne one day in eternity, that we get to enter heaven because the alternative is not pretty. But on top of that, like I look at my life and I look at the things that I put my hand to, the works of my life, and I say, well, I don't want to be the one that, that looks at, God looks at it and says, well, you built with the, the lesser materials with the, with the wood and the hay and the straw. I want to be the one that when the fire comes and it tests my life and tests the things that God, that I've done, that I've built with gold, silver and costly stones. Because as the fire comes, the judgment fire, and, and comes to test the quality of my work and my workmanship, I want, I want it to last. I want it to be something that is... Um, eternal. And I guess as a, as a secondary analogy to all this, I, I mean, I personally struggled to put this into, into my head a little bit. And so how God um, showed it to me was through, um, I guess, trying to picture it as right now, how that would look. And um, if I was a builder, and I don't know a lot about building, do we actually have any builders? <laughs> Awesome. Well, you might be able to help me out on this one. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, if you're, if you're creating a building, um, you, you tr like, let's just picture you're trying to build the best building, like a house that is going to last and it's going to endure it and it's going to be um, every single detail of everything is um, completely thought of. And um, so, you know, you build your foundations, you build the walls, you paint, you do, you know, you probably don't actually do all that as the builder, but let's just say you do. <laughs> and you, you make it the most beautiful house, completely functional. Before those keys are handed over to someone, someone will have to do a quality check of those things. So they might first walk in and they're going to walk in through, through the front door and, or up, the door's working, fantastic. They might even stand outside and look at it all and look at the exterior of the house and look at not you, again, landscaping. They might look at the beautiful gardens. They'll look at the paint job. They'll look at how it looks from the road even. And then, yeah, as they walk in, well, first of all, is there any foundation? Because there's no point having a, a house with no floor. So you're just going to fall straight through. So again, Jesus being our firm foundation, that's what we need first. And then the walls and, you know, 
just picture yourself walking through every single detail, the bathrooms, the bedrooms, and looking at the cracks. Is there any cracks in the wall? All the obvious things. But then, again, quality check. Is there any point having a house where the plumbing's not working? So, or there's going to be a gas leak. So, again, everything has to be checked. The things that are seen and the things that are not seen. And so, essentially, Judgment Day, as I pondered Judgment Day and standing before his throne, I knew that the Bible says every single part of our life is going to be checked over. It's not just the exterior stuff. He doesn't really care about the exterior stuff. We can look like the best Christian in the room and yet have all our interior falling apart. And, you know, so God is going to do like a quality check of our lives. And I guess, again, painting the picture as we walk into the throne room of God. And I just, the more I think about it, the more I can't wait for that day. Because everything I've done in this, like, you think of eternity just for a moment. And our brains just can't even... Um, like understand and comprehend the extent of it and this tiny part of my life I want to know that I've done everything I can to 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 live my life well for him and I can picture for myself I'm just so excited to walk in and see like that song said see the glory and see this is my God that I have chosen to live my life for and chosen to give everything for and even the, the people that criticised and the people that judged me for it, God's there smiling upon me and he's saying, well done, good and faithful servant. And, you know, when I see it like, uh, there's a word for it, starting with M, someone might help me. Nah, and, um, you know, and it looks, it looks over like a montage maybe, uh, it looks over your whole life and paints the picture from, from the moment you were born to the moment that you die and, and brings out everything. And, and I know some things will not be pretty. Some of those moments, God's going to know it's all right, you know. I love you, but we'll just burn that one up. But as a whole, I just would hate that he goes, all right, you were saved, fantastic, you enter eternity. But we don't want to burn it all up. You know, can we not allow our lives to be burnt up because it was just insignificant? And, and essentially what it says is, is that there's going to be rewards that are given to us dependent on how we live our life. And so I want to live a life that does, you know, potentially give me crowns and I, I'm not going to go into the theology of it. But again, I just want to present everything so that when I receive my reward, I can throw it back at Jesus and at his feet and thank him for everything because it's not actually about me. And he'll say, you know, great job, amazing. We celebrate everything that you've done and we celebrate the people you've reached because of your life. But essentially I go, thank you, because I couldn't have done it without you. Couldn't have done anything without you. And I'm not going to boast because it's not actually about me, it's about him. And so, yeah, Judgment Day. I feel like it's a massive topic. And um, I've been reading... Sorry, we'll take a drink. I've been reading... John Bevere's um, Driven by Eternity book. So if you ever want a uh, like solid foundational book that will rock your world around this, read it because <laughs> it rocked my world and it's changed my, my heart and my attention and where I fix my attention. And so, yeah, again, backtracking, I guess, to where I was at and what God's been doing in my life is um, my priorities had to change in everything. And I totally didn't anticipate this whatsoever and I didn't anticipate what God was about to do with me. Um, but my attention changed off the things that I was doing to suddenly realising that there's a whole world around me, that I have my understanding of heaven and hell and I believe I'm saved and I know that I enter eternity, but I'll remember them. I'll remember them and they entered eternity because God was on this journey of doing stuff in their life and I was a part of it. And, you know, um, again, in the scriptures it talks about planting the seed and watering the seed, but God's the one that makes it grow. And so it's, it's not about necessarily seeing someone through to salvation or even seeing them pass that and discipling them. And, and you know, living life, it's 100% important too. 
But I've been encouraged that it doesn't matter if I'm planting the seed, it doesn't matter if I'm watering the seed, that my part, whatever God's challenging me to do, is very important, very significant. And so in my journey, um, again, my priorities had to change. And I, I was challenged that this is what I needed to do. I needed to... Look, it came off, it came off a Tuesday chapel, which um, God does incredible things um, in those moments and I remember that we were praying and believing for the lost people in our community and we were praying for their salvation and praying that God would move and break off, off the chains and, and all the things and we well, yes and amen to that moment and everything in me was like how can I go on with my day as if that was not a significant thing I don't want to just sit on my computer and spend the next eight hours of my day fussing around, doing other insignificant, in my mind, things. And everything in my heart just leapt towards walking down the street of Tatura and asking God to use me. And that scared the living daylights out of me <laughs> because that, you know, it was not even on my radar, but I knew that that was where God was challenging me. And so I sat down with Jeremy, we had a, a conversation and, and he said, absolutely, let's do it, you know, go for it. And um, I called up Jackie, who I knew God was already prompting her in that area, and, and we did. And look, to be honest, um, there were days, there's been days where I've gone, what are we doing? Like, <laughs> really, what are we doing? And we walk up the street, and we walk back the street, and we're like, all right, God, we're here. And it kind of feels a little bit just, okay, we're taking a faith step here. And even for the first few weeks, you know, we had, I could tell you so many stories, but we had so many interesting, funny things that we've learned and we were um, experiencing. And even in the moments where it didn't feel like we really were nailing it, we just knew that God was smiling upon us in those moments. And we just felt to continue pressing in, even if we weren't seeing what, you know, we weren't seeing the miracles, we weren't seeing, um, you know, in front of our eyes, we weren't pe seeing people saved, but we just knew that whatever we put our hand to, God was smiling upon us and he could see the faith inside of us that, you know, let's just give it a shot <laughs> and let's just make ourselves available for what God wants to do through us. So, yeah, hang on. Next thing, I guess we, you know, there's still a level of dissatisfaction in that. So God was diving us a little bit deeper and he's gone, well... There's more. We know there's more. The Bible says there's more. And, and, you know, as you read, where are we? Mark 16, 15. And it, it talks about going to all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And people are going to be baptized and saved and you'll hold snakes, you'll drink poisons and, and not, you know, um, not die. You're going to see people sick and see them healed and all those things and we're going well we know there's more we're not seeing it yet and so the challenge again was like all right well we want to see it we want to see a more God we want to see the overflow of this like and and even just seeing other people step in so you know I've gone for walks with Jackie I've gone for walks with like probably four or five other people within our church now and and God's doing something and igniting this like all right we've got to live for something more and the next step, you know, was going, well, God, I don't want to just be used in my, like, 10-minute, 20-minute, half-hour walk up and back in Tatura. I want to be used in my day-to-day. -day. And so that was, you know, that was a challenge to me. And I remember the first time God did that and I was just walking around the lake with my kids, trying to get them out of the house, keep ourselves sane. And God said, go talk to that guy. And he was taking photos and he was walking off the normal path. And I felt like God was saying that, that he loved him and that he would go off the beaten path for him and that God would do anything to chase him down, essentially. And I shared that with him and, and you know, he thanked me. I've never, I've never had anyone um, push back on me and, and get mad at me. But, yeah, people have been very receptive and so I shared that with him. And for me, it was like the next faith building step. God, use me in my everyday. Don't let my life be wasted. Use me. Use me. And so that was the first thing. And then, like, we've also had 
the first opportunity to pray for someone. You know, that was a very significant moment where one with Jackie that I remember and then one for myself that I'll share um, where I was at, at an event and we were in Yarrawonga and I, um, yeah, I felt, well, actually the, <laughs> there was a lady at the reception and, and she was bombarding us with questions and going, oh, where's this group from? And we're like, yeah, we're from a church. And, and um, other people were talking and, and trying to kind of get her there, trying to, you know, yeah, and she's going, well, you know, what's, what's it all about? Why do young people go to your churches? And we're like, because you just, you know, once you belong, you believe and you receive and God loves you. And, you know, they're sharing that with her. And I just, I heard those words and Jeremy keeps speaking it. So it was in my brain of um, that we, we, we're not preaching with wise and eloquent words, but by a demonstration of his spirit. And so I, I stood there and I said, well, God, what does she need right now? What does she need? And, and I just landed on her ears. And I mean, I, I can't even give you a biblical reason, but God spoke and said um, she needs healing in her ears. And me, oh, <laughs> scary faith step. But, I, you know, conversation turned and I just said, hey, look, um, this sounds weird, but do you have a problem with your ears? And she looked at me and was like, huh? And I said, like, do you have any pain or anything in your ears? And she was like, how did you know? I said, because God loves you and he knows. And then I shared, Jesus loves you and he paid the price on the cross. So for your salvation, but also for your healing. And he wants to heal you today. And she was leaping for joy. And she like walked around the, the area, like she had a thing stop on her. She walked around and I said, can you put your hands on your ears? I'd love to pray. And we prayed together. And again, haven't seen the... the the healing moment straight away but man she was overjoyed you could see the holy spirit in her she was like oh my gosh thank you so much and she was yeah like wandered back into work and you could just see she was pinging like she was oh my gosh <laughs> what just happened and you can only imagine what happens after there because in those moments you know your brain can't even wrap your head around what's happening and, and after you walk out and you go what just happened <laughs> what just happened um, and so the words of, you know, that God loves you and God wants to see you healed and whole, you know, ringing in, the, ringing in her ears. Yeah, um, it only gets crazy from there. <laughs> and um, again, I just want to point it back to the fact of like even just mentioning in this, this has happened within the last two and a half months. And even just mentioning it to Jeremy in the first place was like, scared the living daylights out of me. I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> and, um, you know, even mentioning what God was doing um, in me to Cameron was like a big step. I'm like, what's he going to say? What's he going to think? And, and then mentioning it to my friends, what judgment or what thoughts are they going to say? And, you know, it's just been thing after thing. So I just want to challenge you. It, you might be looking at this and going, how could I even start? But the starting, it's in the starting. It's just about starting. And in the go, just go and make disciples, go and preach um, the gospel and go. And it's actually not harder than that. It's just about going. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I want to share another story. And um, this one really hit hard for me on the day. And um, yeah, again, like it's it's in the everyday and that's where I found God's really like significantly used me the most. And I, you know, I was running late for work. I was spending a bit of time in message prep and reading that book I mentioned before. And I wouldn't normally do that in the mornings. I would normally probably get to work and then may spend some time doing that. Um, but the timing worked out because God knew exactly what he was doing. And um, again, I was like, I need to go to Woolies, but for personal reason, not for work reason. So I really shouldn't be doing it in my work time, but I felt to go there anyway. So I went there and I sat in the car park and I was like, well, you know, I'm kind of wasting my work day away, but, um, God use it. And, um, I sat in the car and, um, yeah, asked God, Hey, like, is there anything here? And, um, I immediately saw a picture of a guy in my head and it was the clearest it's ever been. Um, and, I could see him, I could see what he was wearing, I could see his, his beanie and his jacket, I could see um, where he was going to be standing in the supermarket and 
um, God said he's going to look like a homeless man. And I, I take that as he, he may not have been, but he's going to look like a homeless man. And I um, sensed and knew that he was having suicidal thoughts. And um, I felt like God had just said to share God loves him and that he sees his situation, sees what he's going through. Um, and... Yeah, as clear as day, like I walked into those supermarket doors and exactly where I pictured he would be, he was walking right towards me. And um, it was just so like mind-blowing, you know, that God knew him and he knew every detail. He knew what he was going to be wearing. He knew um, what he's experiencing and that God would put us in the right place, that I would spend that extra time at home and I would duck into the supermarket and all the things to line up to reach this man, to tell him that he sees his situation and that there's a God out there that loves him. And I I got to share it with him, obviously. And um, again, like, (laughs) to stop and think, just to paint a picture in my own head. I, I, you know, I get back in the car holding back tears and, and going, well, I don't know everything, but I can only just paint a little picture of what potentially the next 24 hours would have looked like and potentially what the next 24 hours now is going to look like. And um, that gives me hope. <laughs> that gives me enough hope that what God is doing through me is important. Um, to love people right, right where they're at. And we walk past moments every day and I'm so much more aware of it now because... God's using me in my everyday and he's putting a finger on situations, putting a finger on people. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm not going to say it's perfect, you know. Um, The fear kicks in (laughs) and you stand there and you question and you wonder and you say to God, you know, get them to move their arm like this and then I'll know and then I'll do it. And, <laughs> and you, you know, you miss opportunities. I've missed opportunities and, I, you know, it's kind of now broken me because I'm like, God, I know that you were trying to speak and I know that you were wanting to move, but, you know, I've missed it, but I haven't felt like God's, you know, upset with me. He's gone, that's all right, get back up, do it again. <laughs> um, yeah, one last story I'm going to share and I could tell you so many of, of the wins and the, fail, the failures, but... <laughs> Again, this other situation. And again, this is like to share the fear of, of what it's taken to step out. And um, I went again to the supermarket. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I heard God say, there'll be a lady. And I was like, God, you're going to have to be a little bit more specific. <laughs> There's going to be lots of ladies, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> and then after, I, you know, I had to lean in a little bit and go, well, what, you know, where, what, you know, what do I share? Um, he said, there'll be a lady near the trolleys and just go and offer help. And I'm like, okay, like, again, I, you know, I'd prefer to, you know, have you got a headache? Because it's like, yes or no. Um, but, yeah, so go and offer help. And, and in my own head, I pictured an older lady. So I walked in, there was a lady there at the trolleys. <laughs> and um, I was like, it's not what I pictured. So I walked away, I did my shopping. <laughs> and I absolutely could have missed that moment. Um, but praise God I didn't because, well, praise God that God knew what he was doing um, because I did my shopping and I came back and I, I was like, look, God, I know I, know I kind of stuffed up there. Um, but if there's a lady near the trolleys, when I go near the strawberries, because I'll be able to see the trolleys, um, I'll do it. <laughs> and I stood there, the same lady was still at the trolleys and I um, I literally, I ducked into another bit and I stood there and I was staring at the butter for who knows how long. Because <laughs> I'm going, oh, like, I just want to get home to my kids, <laughs> to be honest. And, um, and she, was still, it was, she was still there and I was like, what, can I, what do I have to lose? Because this could be eternal life for her. Um, yeah, and, oh gosh. Um, yeah, I went over and I, I did, I offered help. And, and initially she said, nah, like, I think I'm good. And I said, so you didn't come in kind of needing help, help for any, like, did you have something in your mind when you're thinking of coming to the supermarket? And I, I don't, I'm like, I know, I know this sounds weird. And she's like, why are you asking? And I said, I'm a Christian. And um, I just, God's challenging me to do this kind of stuff. And she said, I'm a Christian too. And then she opened up her world to me and she said, well, actually my sister got a terminal diagnosis this week. 
and um, and it's it's been okay, but it kind of just hit me today. And as I walked into the supermarket, um, you know, I've, I'm just really struggling, and I don't even know where to go. And and so, you know, I stand, oh, I stand with her and um, give her give her a hug with both of us with tears in our eyes and and offer to pray with her and stand with her in a situation. And, you know, I'm like, I don't care what anyone else in the supermarket thinks of me anymore because it actually matters more what God thinks of this situation. Actually, it actually matters so much more what God thinks about her. And and to turn that situation around and, again, just just provide hope that God God loves them, that God sees their situation, that God knows and, and that God actually paid for the price of every every illness and just to provide faith in that situation where there was hopelessness and and you know I don't know how that situation is going to pan out only God knows but again to be reminded that God knows and God loves them and God's standing with them amongst all of the pain and and amongst all of the questioning and and the wondering of what God's going to do that God loves them so much and I you know (laughs) I get their names if I get the opportunity and again I'm just reflecting on them again and again and praying for their situations. So it's not just a once-off situation. It's like God can then use it again and again and again, where I go, all right, God, well, we're going to pray for, for this lady soon. We're going to pray for Carol. We're going to pray for Zach. We're going to pray for Archibald. We're going to pray for all these different people that we've come into contact with because it doesn't matter that we know their names. God knows them. God knows their situations and everything that they're going through. We'll get keys back up wherever we're at. Thanks, Lydia. Um, the last thing I want to share is my, my fourth point is live walking in power. And I've been re- reminded time and time again. I've probably missed tons of my scriptures today, but who cares? Um, <laughs> is like the demonstration of his power. And also this scripture does say in Corinthians, it talks about, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. And, you know, I think I always thought evangelism was having the answers and trying to provide all the answers and, you know, coming to people and, and you know, sharing them <laughs> a four-step kind of um, instructional thing to get them saved. And God's totally wiped that out of my mind because it's actually, it's not about anything I can say. And it's, it's not about even what I can do. It's about what God can do in a situation. And so when we, when we talk about Mark um, 16 and 15, going to all the world and preach the gospel and all these things will follow, it's actually all these things are going to follow not because we know how to heal someone, not because we know how to ca- cast out a demon, not because we know how to do anything, but because God provides and so as we step into his power and we go, well, you know, there's a bit of a, a gap here between my human understanding and my knowledge and my um, abilities, that's where God has to move. That's where God has to step in because we can't do it in our own strength. So all that is required of us is go and preach. Go and preach the gospel. Who? All creation. All creation you know, we don't want to stand here and sit and preach to each other every week. We want to preach to the people that need to be saved and know Jesus. And I just, I pray that my testimonies are going to challenge you. They're going to be something that as you step out and you, you start asking God, just use me, use me today. And trust me, it's not that hard because he provides the rest. And we do think we have to have all the answers, but it's actually his power. Stepping into his power and his love and and knowing that he knows every detail of everyone's life. That's all about him. And, you know, God judges everything at the end of the day. And, and he, you know, he cares about our intentions as well, our motives behind what we do. And I know I'm standing with people that our intentions would come from a correct place. But I just want to say it from the get-go. I know I was talking with someone recently and and they were saying, I used to do this kind of thing, but my intentions were all wrong. It was to come together and to share a good story of how good I am. And, um, you know, God doesn't doesn't love that. (laughs) God wants us to come from a humble place of just, you know, let's do it, but because we want to reflect Him. We, we We want Him to have all the glory in everything we do in our lives. And um, 
yeah, I guess I just want, I want to challenge you, put the challenge to you. Just allow God to step in. The things that He can do through you are more significant than you realise. They're so much more significant than you realise. And I'm just trusting that God is speaking. I'm trusting that God is moving you right now to a point of, of stepping out of that fear that's holding you back and the silencing that the enemy wants to have in your life, stepping in, you into a new faith and a whole new realm of understanding of what God can do through you. And I, you know, I also pictured, imagine walking into church and we're not talking about what we did during the week because, you know, we had a good day at work or, you know, the kids are sick or whatever. But we're the ones sharing about, you know, I was on the street and I got to pray for this guy and, and see him healed. And, you know, a true story, I got to sit with a guy at a playground and tell him that God loves him and, and invite him to church. And, and imagine, you know, today, because of what God's doing, I was looking at the door wondering, is that guy going to be coming in to, today? But imagine we're all on this journey and you, you're arm in arm with someone that you spoke to this week that got saved on the street. Or, yeah, again, just sharing the, the stories and the testimonies of everything God's done through you. That's where God wants us to live, to be activated in our faith, to be on mission, to be focused and to be thinking about eternal things, thinking about the eternal matters that actually matter to him more than just building a nice house or driving a nice car. So would you stand with me? even coming into this message I knew full well that God's already doing this um, this is not something that God's just challenging me in and I know through conversation God's already been challenging people and you know this is I'm just so thankful to God that he is moving the church to a point of activation to a point of being on mission and our attention being fixed on him and truly fixed on him and so this morning, I, I just really felt, I want to invite you, if, if you're already stepping into this with me, which, um, with God, but with me, um, I know I could list off names of you that, that I've had conversations with and God's challenging you. I encourage you, let's come to the front, stand together and believe together that God's going to use us in greater ways. And then I also know that through me speaking, there's going to be some people that you've been challenged and you've been, um, it, your heart's been going, yeah, that's me. Like, I want to be, I want to be that person. I want to be doing what you're doing. And, and if that's you, I want to pray with you. I want to, I want us to come together and agree together that yes, God can reach our community, but it's not, I mean, yes, it will happen through prayer, but it will happen through us. It'll happen through the activation of us walking with God and living it out like he tells us to. So yeah, please, as we worship, I just, I, I spur you on and I encourage you. Come, let's pray together, let's believe together and let's just step out and be challenged that God's going to use us in this area. Amen? Amen, let's sing.